Hey everybody, welcome to Buratech. In this episode, I'm gonna be giving you some incredibly useful tips to survive a recession. All right, welcome back. Please be sure to like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribes we get, the more content we can make. It might not mean a lot to you, but I would love if this channel got a thousand likes and a thousand subscribers. Remember that this channel doesn't do a Patreon and said we sell our digital products down below. The more money we get from the products that you buy below, the more content we can make. All right, so let's talk about a recession. As of this video, oil lost a ton of money and this was a huge drop. In fact, there hasn't been a bigger drop since 1991. So something is definitely at play. So in terms of oil, there's a lot of factors on why it dropped so much. First is there's a huge virus scare as of 2020, and Saudi Arabia decided to increase production, which also dropped the price, which is a price war. Now, of course, when something like oil drops, it means that the economy could be affected as well, and oil is sometimes a barometer of the entire economy. Not always, but sometimes it does reflect. After all, oil does power the economy, so if there's less demand, perhaps the economic situation is good. But what does this mean for you and is a recession imminent? Well, as of this video, there hasn't been a recession for the last 10 years. We are long overdue for a recession and it will happen eventually. I graduated university in 2008 during the worst global financial crisis since the Great Depression and it was really tough. I really couldn't find a job and even the jobs that I did get at that time were not very good. I had to work multiple jobs and I tried to start a business as well in my spare time. It was really hard and things can absolutely go back there. For the last five to eight years, things have been really good. It's been easy to find a job and it's been easy to make money in the stock market, but what happens if those two things are not true anymore? What happens if it's really hard to find a job and what happens if it's really hard to make money with investments? Well, then we have a problem and how do you figure out how to navigate that problem? Well, the first tip I have for you is to save as much as humanly possible and to look at every single expense. During a recession, every dollar that you get will feel more like four or five. And the reason for this is that dollars that are coming in might be scarce. Now, this can be very difficult, especially if you're used to spending a lot of money. If you have a really good job and you're spending a lot of money, it's very hard to rein that back in. It's very hard to take that behavior and say, I need to spend less. I know this from personal experience because I went from making almost nothing to making a lot. And then over the years, my income is of course fluctuated because I'm self-employed. That's one of the hardest things that I've had to deal with over the years as a self-employed person. And I've been self-employed for so many years and I still haven't gotten used to it. Variable income for me is normal and I would love to have a paycheck that pays the same amount every two weeks. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be also good to have raises every year? This is something that I've never really experienced. It's very tough to be a self-employed person. But on the flip side, I know how to save money. Because of that variable income, I always try to think of my income at the lowest level versus the highest level. And if I do make more money, then I tend to save it away for a rainy day. And you need to do this too. If you have extra money or extra money coming in, then I highly recommend that you put it away for a rainy day. This is the number one thing that will help you through a recession. Because you could lose your job, you, your partner can lose a job, something can happen. Remember, recessions are not good, but they are inevitable, so you should prepare. So the best thing you can do is to save your money and to really be diligent on what you're spending. So what happens if the next recession is like 2008 or worse? Maybe instead of a recession, it's a depression like the 1930s. Remember that depressions can last for 20 years and there are countries like Japan that have been in a recession for 20 years. And this can absolutely happen to Western economies. Western economies are not immune from this. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's something that you should prepare for. Imagine if for 20 years, we didn't really have growth and growth was maybe either plus two to negative two every single year. That is, it's either plus two or negative two in that range for 20 years. And we didn't really see any of that growth. This is what a lot of really smart economists are predicting. 
I don't know what's going to happen because frankly, no one knows what's going to happen, but I am absolutely prepared for that because I've learned so many things along the way. Another thing that you can do in a recession is to upskill. And this is why I made Mammoth Interactive in the first place. In 2009, I got swine flu and I was out for six weeks. Now, swine flu, this current virus, there's a lot of parallels to what's happening in the past to what's happening today. So I was out for six weeks. I had bronchitis. I went to the emergency room three times and I had to spend a lot on medication. It was a really rough time. But during that time, I learned a whole new coding language. Even though I've been a coder for many years, I took the opportunity to learn. And this is something that you should do too. Now, of course, if you're sick, you don't want to push yourself. But if you're not sick, and you've been laid off, then I highly recommend using that time to upskills. In fact, a lot of my friends at the time went to get master's degrees or they tried to get some other kind of degree to basically help them out in the future. Because once 2009 hit, what you learned in maybe the early 2000s to the mid 2000s was no longer relevant. So a lot of my friends just went to school to switch careers. And the recession is a great time to switch careers. If you're going to switch careers, make sure it's something A, you want to do, and B, that it has longevity. Because sometimes you can enter in a school for two to four years, and when you come out of that school, then the demand for that particular profession has evaporated. This happens all the time because the world changes all the time. So one of the things that you can do is you can learn from home because you can buy online courses and learn. Hint, hint, we do sell online courses below. Now remember that an online course has made my career really good. In 2009, I learned to cope by learning online and the tutorials back then were not very good. In fact, a few months later, I purchased some online content and I made an Xbox game. And what I did is I used that Xbox game in my portfolio to tell people that I knew how to make a game. And from that, I got a ton of freelancing gigs. You can do the exact same thing. You can make mobile apps, you can learn machine learning, you can learn how to code, you can learn graphic design, you can learn 3D modeling, you can learn game development. You can learn pretty much anything that you want. And the best thing about learning from home is that you don't have to commute anywhere. So if you are forced to stay at home, through some government intervention, or if you are self-isolating, this is a really good option for you. Also, you can either learn for free on YouTube or pay a little bit of money for courses. Online courses aren't really that expensive. And personally, I just go and buy online courses just because I want something that's a little bit more polished than some simple YouTube video, but that's just me personally. Another thing you can do is buy property. Now, if you happen to have a really stable job, let's say a government job that's not going anywhere and you have enough of a down payment, chances are property will be less expensive in a recession. And the bigger the recession, the bigger the drop in prices. And if you live in an area where prices will naturally rise, then it's a good idea. Now, of course, real estate is local. Something in Seattle is different from New York. It's different from something in Arizona. It's different from Japan. And the UK real estate is different everywhere so you have to do your research in figuring out whether or not you a can afford a property or B whether or not you will think you'll make money off of it now the thing about property is that in the last 10 years certain property markets like San Francisco have absolutely ballooned in price and that's because there's been so much demand from big companies with big money now that demand can easily evaporate if those big companies leave or if they decide to move their offices, then you can lose a lot of money. Now, personally, I rent and I've always rented because I take my money and I save it. Now, I happen to live in one of those cities where properties have ballooned and I've always kicked myself for not getting in sooner, but there are always risks to property and you can absolutely lose all of your money with a poor investment. So please do your research. Even in the last 10 years, some people that have put down maybe $100,000 on a house have become multi-millionaires just because they bought in the right location. This is the exception to the rule, not the rule. There are a ton of expenses with home ownership. Even if you own a condo, there are tons of expenses. In fact, if something happens to your condo building, you can be on the hook for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And this has happened to many locations all over the world. So just because you want to buy a property doesn't mean you actually should. Now recessions bring on a lot of bankruptcies and in these bankruptcies, people have 
perhaps purchase the house that's too expensive. And because they purchased the house that's too expensive, they have to sell it. And they most likely have to sell it for a loss. Remember when I just said that buying a property can absolutely ruin you? It absolutely can. If the property plunge is big enough, then people can lose absolutely everything and they can be in debt for the rest of your life. So make sure that you really do your due diligence when you buy a house. But if you really need to buy a house, the recession's a great time because it will be people that are forced to sell. It's a little sad, but if you played your cards right, then it will be good for you. Another thing that you can do in a recession is to buy things that people are selling. Oftentimes, people will have to sell the things that they don't need because money is tight. You can get really good deals on used equipment. In fact, if it's not technology, buying used is almost a better option now. And in a recession, you'll be able to get things for maybe 50 to 80% off their original price. This is simply because people will need the money and there's not enough buyers out there. Now, the more frivolous the item, the bigger the discount, the more useful the item the less discount now if you want to buy something big like a car then make sure you do your due diligence again if there's any theme to any of my videos is always do your due diligence sometimes cars will be moved from flood zones into other zones and be sold at a lower price now in a recession chances are you'll probably be able to get a good car and a good vehicle uh, because simply people need to sell. They might have three cars when they downsize the two, or they might have two and downsize the one, etc. But because of this, you'll be able to get a good deal. Just make sure you know where the car came from, what kind of work it has done on it, and whether or not it's a good deal or not. So let's talk about some investing strategies in a recession. Now, if you're in a recession, the most obvious choice is to short, but Shorting can be really risky even in a recession. You have to almost time the market to get a really good short. Now, if you are a long-term investor, then the best thing you can do is to either double down on what you've been doing or to maybe take away some of the loss. So let's say you have $10,000, it's lost 30%. So maybe you sell 5,000 of that 10,000 and then you're left with less of a loss. And what you can do is you can either sell half of your stock and rebalance it. And this might be the good option. Now, it does mean that you will lose money, but the thing is is that you might be losing much less money than your competitors. The other approach with long-term investing is to just hold it. The market does always go up. It's gone up for the last 100 to 120 years, so why wouldn't it do that again? Some people out there might say that it will never hit the highs again. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen, but it absolutely can happen. The best case of this is Japan. Japan went from a war-torn country at the end of World War II to an economic miracle, to a huge bubble in the 1980s, and believe it or not, December 31st, 1989 was the peak. After that, Japan's stock market has never reached its high again, and its housing has never reached the same highs again. Literally, for 30 years, it has been in a decline. In fact, there was a small blip when housing was increasing in pricing, and everyone thought it was an absolute miracle. Now, Japan is obviously not the United States. It's not every single country. There are a lot of things that happened with Japan that will not happen in other countries. But just remember that it can happen. And if it does happen, then you have to be prepared for that. Don't buy a house you can't afford. Don't buy too many possessions that you can't afford and always keep learning. So let's get back to investing. Another thing that you can do is invest in bear ETNs or ETFs. And what bear ETNs and ETFs do is go up when the stock market goes down. In fact, there are some tickers like SQQQ that will track the inverse of the S&P. So if you know the S&P is gonna go down, then you can bet some money with this. Now, the other thing about this strategy is to not invest your entire portfolio in this because that would be not a smart move. And the other thing that you need to do in this case is to make sure you have a stop loss. If you're investing in a recession, whether you are long or short, and it's pretty much just good advice in general, is to have a stop loss. If you want to invest $10,000, you need to figure out how much money you're going to lose before you call it quits. Now, you don't want it to be 50%. You maybe want it to be between 3 
and 10%. And once you get stopped out a couple times, then you'll figure out where you went wrong and hopefully do a better job. If you're day trading, 3% is a good number. If you're long-term investing, 10%. Remember, if you get stopped out, you have to own it and say you made the wrong decision. And then you can figure out why you made the wrong decision and then you can figure out where to go from there. Sometimes it's not your fault, other times it is. The best thing you can do is maximize the time it's your fault versus when it's not your fault. Because if it's your fault, you can fix it. If it's not your fault, then you can't really do anything about it. But what you also need to do is maximize the amount of percentages that are within your control. Because if you can control your performance, then your chances are you'll do better. If you're betting on things that will randomly happening, that's just gambling. So to sum this all up, recessions aren't good, but they are inevitable and you should always prepare for it. The best thing you can do is save your money. Now, a recession is a great time to pivot in life. Maybe you were in a job that you didn't like and you wanna pivot. Then you can simply learn a new skill and switch careers. It's a great time for that. In fact, sometimes you can do that. You have the option and the luxury to do that. And other times you have to. Perhaps your specific job is now obsolete. And this happened quite a bit between 2007 and 2010. A lot of jobs that were very good careers in 2007. By 2010, it was not looking as good. So as a software developer before 2008, it wasn't as good as it was after 2008. Now perhaps something similar might happen. Perhaps after the next recession, software developers will not be in demand, in which case I need to go find a new career. And this is something that can possibly happen to you in your career. And remember, it can happen to anyone at any time. So you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to learn a new skill. You have to be prepared and save up enough money. And you have to be prepared to take significant losses in your home, your investments, and possibly even your possessions. So if you prepare for the worst, you'll sleep a little bit better through the best times. All right, so that concludes the video. What are you doing for the recession? Please put your comments down below. I would like to know. Please be sure to like and subscribe. It might not mean a lot to you, but if this video got a thousand likes, it would mean the world to me. If you really like this channel, you can buy Mammoth Interactive's products down below. Every dollar that we get from the products that you buy below goes into making more content. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We have everything from Photoshop tutorials to web development tutorials to machine learning to pretty much anything that's technically related. We produce 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month. It's the best way to help with this channel. Our goal is to get to 10,000 paid monthly subscribers. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in another video.